that range of petitions presents new uh, findings on the Kaggle project, which was based around advanced house price irrigation techniques. In the competition, our goal was to predict the house prices based on the features that we found inside our data set. Our features were basically came from the AIMS housing data set, which shows the data from 2006 to 2010 using AIMS Awa America. And this data set was set up by Dean Bukov of the Keen Delivered. After going through the data set and reading more about the data set, he recommended that we take care of a few outliers, which would skew our data quite a bit. And by taking his advice, we got rid of all the outliers in our data and in turn uh, took away some skewness from our data. We've also imported all the normal libraries that we've used for a stats packet from SciFi to Matplotlib to SKLearn. SKLearn was used to do the predictions, and Matplotlib was used so you can have plots based on the, on the data we had. And we had a sci-fi package to do all our math for us. After that, we had to uh, identify some, some things we had to do so we could take out the sales price as our target variable we were trying to predict on. And we took out the house ID as this is the placeholder for what we're going to do our predictions. And the outliers, as you can see here, are denoted by the figure in circle. Going over to the missing values, because it's very important to clean all your data before going on with the actual predictions. We saw that a lot of categorical data was uh, included as a NA, which is a not available. So we included most of them with a none, and some of them we used mode on so that we could have an accurate representation of the data. While moving over to numerical, we tried to stick to a, a normal uh, distribution, so we made everything mean, so that everything is in the same uh, bucket. And we also used median on some of the things that we had uh, a relation to some other variable like neighborhood, which means that a lot of the same neighboring areas have the same lot frontage in theory. By looking at the correlation between the two variables, we can see that not all, or by looking at correlation, we can see that not all correlation is good correlation. As seen here, it shows the main divorce per thousand people based on the unit modern consumption per capita. Even though they are very correlated with one another, they don't add any value to one another. By looking at this, we can see that uh, the correlation matrix for our target variable, uh, we can see that which features would be highly correlated and best to be used with our model. By the, the higher degree, the shade is the more correlated is our target variable. And we try to use the most highly correlated variables we got to do our predictions on. After we've done our prediction on a normal linear regression as our test, just to see how our regression would hold up, uh, based on the clean data, we can see that it gives us a normal overlap of where the, the, the predicted variable would be and where the actual one is in blue. You can see by the overlap that there is a slight change in our models. If we go over to our ridge regression, you can see that it changes up quite a lot and that it does, has a lot more overlapping values on the predicted side. You can see the red is a bit more prominent on in this picture. By comparing these two models, we can see which one gave us the best predictive accuracy at the end, but that would have been insufficient, so we went with the last model as our overall model at the end of the day, because it got the closest to our predicted uh, score, and it gave us a very high accuracy based on the data we were using. That was also our final model that we presented to the Carroll competition, which gave us a score of 0 0.1179, which was good for, I don't know, but it was pretty good. And that's all from me for today. I'm going to be handing over to my colleague and enjoy the rest of the day.